Welcome to the Pop on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is I am the Pope in question. My name is Reverend May Lynn. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. It is episode 475, and the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking, Bunny. <laughs> you can hear it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Big Big Shoe. And in case you haven't heard last week on the show, uh, it, let's, make it, let's make it more professional sounding. Previously on The Pope on Phil. I think that's good. Uh, Bunny Williams made an announcement that shook the podcast to its very core. That this October... As this podcast celebrates 10 years, yes. as we celebrate 10 years of the Pope on Film podcast, we will be ending the show. I need some dramatic music. Give me some dramatic music, Bunny. Dun, dun, dun. And I just wanted to talk about it some more because, I mean, this October will be the 10 year anniversary of our podcast, Bunny. Yes. 10 years! That's crazy. I was literally a completely different person when we started this podcast. But yes. Literally. Not just figuratively. Literally. I have completely changed. You, you were a small Jewish black girl. Yeah. Um, we have... I'm proud of what we have done with this podcast. Uh, we've created, we have with this strange ass podcast that we've done for almost a year, for almost 10 years now, we have created roughly two and a half lifetimes of content. Yes. That will just wait online for some insane person to discover it. Hey kids, you want to listen to all of the Pope on Film podcast? Well, good effing luck. Yeah. That's how much content we have made. Good That's luck right. trying to hear everything we have created. That'll take you forever. You got to quit your job. You got to move to a, um, like a monastery. The Pope on Film Monastery, where you can study nothing but the Pope on Film. Yes. Get serious about it. I'd like to think that we've created so much content that says so much that in the future, when we're long since dead, America will become obsessed with the Pope on Film podcast like uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'd like to think. Because we it's basically are, we impossible. We are wild stallions. We are I wild mean, we, stallions. We just always have been. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a wild horse now, Bunny. Yeah. And wild horses can't be broken. <coughs> unless with a shotgun or a bat. I can get broken with that. We've created something that... I don't know about you, Bunny, but I am very proud of what we have done. Yes, I am. That is true, Nadia Claire. You underestimate some people's dedication to hyperfixations. I sh certainly know that because my family is filled with ADHD people who get hyper fixated for long or possibly short periods of time about things. And then they sort of, it, my 18 year old is staring daggers at me from across the room. Okay. They're not staring daggers. They're just staring, but deep down inside, they know that it's true. So, um, so yeah, there are some people who are hyper fixated. My 18 year old is a completely different person. Yes. From when we started this. But I'm really proud of the massive insanity that we have created here with this podcast. And I'm 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 happy of the fact that you have stuck with me for almost a whole damn decade, buddy. We yes. have known each other earlier than that. But we've been recording this podcast for a whole decade. At this point, you know me uh better than my 
older brother, better than my parents, better than my my entire biological family, including aunts, uncles, all of that. You know me. You you our relationship with this podcast has lasted longer than my relationships with most of my exes. <laughs> That's how long there we go. The bunny and May Lynn train has been a rolling that uh we've been together longer than almost we've had this podcast longer than most of my relationships so it's tasha first because we've been dating for 21 years now and this may the uh this fifth of may (laughs) i'm such a mexican this fifth of may will be our 19th wedding anniversary Nice. Between my wife and I, somehow we haven't killed each other yet. So, uh, yet there's still a chance if you've got if you've got um, murder on our on your uh, death pool, there's still a chance. So, um, so it, when it comes to the longest relationships I've ever had, it's Natasha, my wife, and then you, you and this podcast, funny, and then in third place is either sarah or tom depending on whether or not you think that tom and i were dating or not i do he probably doesn't i was quite clear with him the last year or two that we were with him that i loved him and that i had feelings for him and that i wanted to be in a romantic relationship with him and and told him that we had essentially already been in a relationship romantic relationship for years and years and years and years and years and he said that he loved me too and he cared about me too and he loved spending time with me too but despite us regular regularly holding hands and kissing and cuddling and masturbating together he just couldn't be seen ever dating another guy yeah but our relationship ended. And do you know what caused it to end, Bunny? Do you know what caused our relationship to end? What? Well, normally I wouldn't even bother to discuss this topic. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be delving so oh, was it Was it the introduction of, of, of Mountain Dew Code Red? Because no. that fucked up a lot of relationships. No, if anything, that strengthened our relationship. Oh, okay. You want to know how... Uh, long ago, Tom and I were a thing. We have never once texted each other. Oh. We used to get blitzed on Zima. Oh. Uh, we were both big fans of Crystal Pepsi. That's how long ago our relationship was. Normally, I wouldn't bother getting discussing this topic and discussing this topic in so much detail. Uh, however, it's April, and this effing podcast is ending in October, so fuck it. So Tom and I went to Vegas. We both got shit face drunk. And at night, he put the moves on me. And, oh, you love me and want to spend almost all of your time with me and spend all of your money on me. But you can't be seen dating. An, 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 another guy and I respect that but then we're in Vegas and you get drunk and get naked and lay on top of me and uh, stick your tongue in my mouth and try to go down on me and then you ghost me yeah I did nothing okay we started talking again uh, like, a, like maybe like a year ago Tom and I but then I brought up Vegas and he ghosted me again. It's not my fault you're ashamed of being secretly a little bit gay. We all are. <laughs> and it's not my fault that you're one of a billion cishet white guys who gets a little gay when you're drunk. Don't take it out on me. Okay? Don't take it out on me. One of the first things that I thought of when I realized that I was a woman, one of the first things that ran through my head was, Fucking, I bet Tom is so fucking relieved. I bet Tom <laughs> feels like he won the 
freaking lottery. Like, oh my God, Steve is actually a woman. I'm not a queer. Thank you, movie house. You know, running through the streets like it's a wonderful life yeah. or knife. A couple yeah. of a couple of weeks ago, I went to church and Father Tom. Episcopalianism really is sort of like the choose your own adventure book of religion because it's it's there is no shared belief system. It's just a you know shared practice, not shared belief. So I have decided that God is totally fine with me fucking cussing. Okay. God knows I'm a good person. Everything's fine. God, God's okay with that. God and I, uh, her and I, we're good. Yeah. God and I. And so uh, it, I went to the Easter Mass. And, and Father Tom comes up to give his homily, to give his sermon. He starts off with a freaking circumcision joke. Okay. And then later in the sermon, he's talking about specific plot lines of the Lord of the Rings series. This is Episcopalian. Okay. This is, and it's really great. You know, uh, I don't remember why I was talking about that, but uh, a couple of months ago, oh, I don't remember. Oh, a couple of months ago, he started, his entire sermon was about the movie It's a Wonderful Life. Okay. And I was just thinking of two things. Number one, Alfalfa from our gang. And number two, that shitty-ass Carrie Elway's movie. It's a Wonderful Knife. Yeah. And so afterwards, I'm leaving the church and all of the priests and and uh priestesses all, all of the the people who ran the mass are there by the door shaking everybody's hand and talking to them and i shook father tom's hand and i'm like there was a movie that came out a few months ago and i'm interested if you have seen it it's called it's a wonderful knife and we started talking about some crappy horror movie in church it's it's it, episcopalianism is interesting I have seen some Episcopal churches that have had like punk rock concerts and drag shows in their church. All right. Because we watched a good few crappy Christmas movies this last time. Yeah. This was not the one with the killer Santa robot, right? This was the other no, one. Where no, no, was, no. That one was shit. There this was is like the some one... kind of time travel. Oh, the, yes. the guy in the sheet. Yeah. 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 Who, and almost, it, it, who it, almost looked like he was from Scary Movie. Justin Long. Justin Long yes. was the mayor of a tiny town and he's killing people. Yeah. That one. Yeah. And yeah, there was a was lesbian uh, like subplot that I really liked. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, oh, thank God. I'm like, I'm not a queer. Like, fuck off, Tom. And that bunny is the sort of brutal honesty that you can expect from me in the opening segments of this podcast from now until October. Yes. There's going to be a whole Did somebody of... eat a whole cake in that movie? No, that's that's a ghost story, remember? Oh, oh that was the pie. Yeah. They, yeah. Oh, yeah, they ate a whole pie. That movie was... Um, it was an art film, and art is subjective, Meaning people are going to take different things from it. And there are a lot of people out there that think it's beautiful. But I think it's fucking shit. And there you go. That's yeah. my review of the movie A Ghost Story. Um, so yeah. Uh, the Japs of this podcast are going to be really interesting. To be clear in case you're listening now. Why have you started now? Yeah. Because we've been here for nine and nine years. And you're just starting now as we're ending? Boo! You, you, but if you're just joining us, the before. opening... Yeah. If you're just joining us, the opening monologue is called Jeff, a.k.a. The Petty White Memorial Podcast segment brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends Download today. Or, as the kids like to call it, T-B-W-M-P-S-T-B-Y-B-R-S-L-D-T. To blue this 
to Weiber sold it. Yes. As it's called on the street by the kids. They're like, you know what podcast on cap has the best riz? It's Tubuamupus Bidui Bursled It. <laughs> on cap, dead ass, skibbity toilet. That's what <laughs> the kids say on the streets. I know you're impressed with my slang. I, I am. I am. In fact, here's some more blunt honesty for you, and uh, Bunny, if you could uh, just just let me say this, okay? Don't interrupt or anything like that, all right? Okay. Okay. Uh, here's some more blunt honesty for you. I did time in jail, man. Hard time. What was my crime? I stole the Declaration of Independence. They made a movie about it. Yeah. It's called Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny. I'm Santa. You're the Ice Cream Bunny because you're Bunny. Uh, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, the podcast ending. Um, so a part of me is hurt that it's ending. A part of me is in mourning because this show means a lot to me. And uh, it, because this podcast we spend, this time that we spend together, it means a lot to me. And you, Bunny, mean a lot to me. And I legit cannot believe that this podcast will be ending after 10 years. Um, to be clear, I am close to crying, but a large portion of that is I am way over exhausted and I am on hormone replacement. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, so it, it's what I, I I'm close to crying, but also it's real easy to get me to cry yeah. now with day. So I just want to be clear about that. But I'm very sad about this podcast ending. But also, um, it's been a freaking decade. How many podcasts can say that? Not a lot. You know? And, and yes, thank you, Nadia. It's okay to be emotional without an excuse. And uh, I'm getting way busier. Suddenly, I find myself having a little bit of a career. Yeah. You know, and booking shows and going on tour and, and you know, I, I suddenly have an actual career as a storyteller. I'm reading kids books mostly to adults, which was always the dream. I have an actual career as yeah. though I was I would read books to kids, but the parents would be sitting there all bored waiting for it to end. So I said, OK, kids love me. Kids love what I'm doing. But kids aren't going to be the ones that are waking up early on a Saturday and driving to where I do story time. So I need to try and be entertaining to the kids and the adults. And I went for a sort of, when I was a kid, I was primarily watching Monty Python and Looney Tunes. And a lot of times that was like more adult content. So I made a point to never talk down to the kids and to try and be funny for 21 plus years as an entertainer for kids to primarily entertain kids, but also to get the adults to crack up. And it was always my dream of, like, I think that I could do this for adults. But nobody wants me to because I'm just a kid storyteller. And now here I am. I'm doing it. It's the dream. Yeah. Last night I performed on an all-ages all ages talent show. There were, like, four or five kids there. And I told the kids, I said, hey, yes, I've primarily been doing shows for the last year at bars, nightclubs, drag shows, award shows big festivals but i can still entertain the kids i still have that inside me i'm still good with children for example uh here's a funny joke you kids will love okay so a priest and a rabbi and oj simpson go to a uh go to a bathhouse in tibet yeah oh you know what i'm actually not gonna say that one. i'm not gonna say that one it, there were two kids in the front row that were just like <laughs> waiting for me to say more. It was it was really cute. Plus, as you yourself said, and I'd like to repeat that so that it doesn't sound like I'm shitting on you. As you yourself said, you're getting older and tired. Yeah. And plus, you do, it related to that, you do so much for this podcast. I show up and I talk and try and be funny, and now uh, I try and be busty. 
in the hopes that it that helps but so far it hasn't helped which sucks because it's right here and it's all natural but you know. <laughs> so uh you do so much to get this podcast out to the public and i really appreciate all that you do for the podcast funny i always have and i am sure all of the poffies agree so i'm gonna be sad about this sure but yeah it's probably time yeah and i'll be super depressed for a while but i'm okay with this i am okay with this we are pulling the trigger so from then to now i'm gonna be stirring up some shit yeah yeah my brother's a woman beater. I've heard that. There you go. My brother, my brother beats women, and has an alcohol problem. I for a, I he was always called Joe for my entire life, and then he got older and he decided to go by Jose because that is you know his his true name, and and then he took my father's nickname, and now he expects everyone to call him by his father's nickname. So I am going farther than that. And I am now calling him by uh, my aunt and uncle's nickname for him as a child. So he's not Joe anymore. He's Pepito. Pepito. He's little Pepito. He's little Pepito. So Pepito grew up to be a woman beater. There you go. Mic drop. Pipe bomb. <laughs> there you are. Fuck you, Tom. There you go. I'm happy. The best revenge is living a happy life. Yes. There you go. How are you doing, Bunny? You doing all right? Hanging in. Hanging in. Tired all yeah. the time. Same. Yeah. But then again, I, I'm on... Yeah, but uh, you're like doing things. <laughs> I'm doing things, and I'm going out, and I'm doing stuff. My life is crazy right now. I had double hernia surgery. I, I breathe too long. I have to go take a nap. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I had double hernia surgery. And then I got an audition to be in a podcast. Yeah. A queer scripted horror podcast. All of each episode would be a short story. Each one would be written by a different queer writer. And the entire cast would be uh, LGBTQ voiceover actors. And I had an audition, and I was going to go in person for this podcast. And then I had to miss it, because on my way towards the door to leave, I got in the middle of a dog fight, and uh, my leg was mauled. Yes. And my lovely, beautiful, wonderful wife, my partner in life, uh, who is a very strict sort of stickler, she said, I wouldn't call it a mall. Like, don't tell people you got mall because uh, e you weren't mauled. But the way that I see it, if you got attacked, if you got in the middle of a dog fight and after that you found yourself picking pieces of your leg out of your leggings, yeah, that's a mall. Yeah. That's a mauling. And I'm I was not, just like, I'm not sure where that line is. The fine line between maul and not maul. Between maul and bite, you know? Yeah. But I but I I had been bitten really bad and I was like going into shock and like freaking out. And uh I took my pants off to see the damage and there are all these holes on my leg. And I go and because I'm just sort of in a trance from the attack, I'm looking at my pants and I'm like, what? What is this in my pants? It's all sticky. It's covering the inside of my pants. Oh, shit. This is my leg. <laughs> I have pieces of me. How exciting. You've got to show the podcast now. Get that okay. leg up on the desk. It's been a it's been a week now, okay. Okay. To be clear, it has been a week. Mm. Okay. I'm not. 
Can you see that? Wow, impressive. Yeah. Yeah. I have holes in me now. This one it was super deep. Like I could almost see like like muscle tissue in this one. So the way I see it, uh if I'm ever like at a restaurant and I want some ranch, I can just put it in this. Yes. You know, extra extra bowl of ranch. So that's exciting. Uh so yeah. So I've been dealing with that. And you're dealing with what may or may not be cancer, which so far has not won us an award. No, no. It should have. It should have. It's it unfair. You know. It should have. It absolutely should have. But it ha- have it, is, is that confirmed? Funny? Are you really going through it? Uh, I'm worried about they you. They strongly suspect, but there's not much I can do about it. Yeah. You know, they, they got all freaked out about this lump on, on the side here, so we had ultrasound, ultrasound and all that. Well, yeah, I'm broke now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get okay. that. Like, that's yeah, exactly that's... the kind of thing I was trying to get them to not do. Yeah. Ten minute warning. Uh, I get that. I get that. But then I did. Uh, uh, so I'm broken. I, it's not even half the deductible yet. Jesus. I am sorry, buddy. I am really sorry, and I love you. I love and you too. I believe in you. You know what? I've heard of miracle workers in Malaysia. Yeah. We'll just take a quick trip down there. I'm pretty sure that, like, the the voodoo medicine that they have over there. I would do it, but I don't practice it. It's, it's a possibility. I mean, it's something to ball. consider. Yeah. The American healthcare system is shit. Uh, Nadia is absolutely right. The American healthcare system is but, shit. But what, what kind of a copay does a witch doctor want? Can oh, I get away with, like, half a like, chicken or something? Probably just like a pelt. Yeah. You know, we'll just get you a pelt. Some uh, deer skin. Yeah. Mole skin. Just give them notebooks. There you go. So then I did my virtual audition for the podcast. Yeah. And I think that went well. And then I booked a big fancy, like, uh, $30 a plate drag brunch. And they posted an ad. And you saw that. They posted an ad focusing on me being like a special guest, featured entertainer for their show, and and that was awesome. They did that themselves, and then cool. I, I I reposted it on my story time with Maylin uh, page, and they commented that something like we're we're so proud and and excited to have you performing for us, and it's like really because I still have imposter syndrome. Yeah. And so it's really amazing to have this organization be like, hey, we're so excited to have you. And then last night, oh, yesterday was just insane because we woke up super early and the whole family went to the zoo. Yeah. Super hot. And then we came home. And then we got ready and went back into the city for my all ages variety show, which was very good. Yeah, I did. I have a great new joke. Do you want to hear it, Bunny? Yes, please. I figure out of everyone, and I've told this joke to maybe about 30 people at this point, but I figure you would be the best audience for this joke. Okay. Okay. What do you call a Hispanic Star Trek fan? Okay, I don't know. Go. A Mexa. Oh. I like that joke. I think it's adorable. That is a good joke. No, I do like it. Thank you. I like it too. So I've been kind of busy and crazy. I have seen two movies this this past week. Have you? Yes. 
I finally saw Godzilla X Kong, Godzilla Times Kong, Godzilla Roman numeral 10 Kong, the the new empire, yada, 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 something yeah. or other. Um, for the second movie in a row, Legendary Pictures has done it again. They made a Godzilla movie that <coughs> hardly features Godzilla. Yay! <laughs> Once again, they've made a King Kong movie that also features Godzilla. Yes. And it's like, I'm a little bit upset about that, but on the other hand, that was so many Godzilla movies before now. Yeah. You know, so many other movies were like, here's the plot, here's Godzilla coming in, so I can't slide it from that. I, I've gotten to the point where even I, a huge Godzilla fan, am like, I'm kind of done with these. With these yeah. American Godzilla. I'm kind of done. Uh, I'm kind of done. And I also saw the amazing, amazing horror film, Late Night with the Devil. It is currently How my favorite movie that? of the year. I fucking loved it. They nailed it. Like a late night 1970 talk show. Absolutely yeah. perfect. Of this guy who is just trying to beat Johnny Carson, but you fucking can't beat Johnny Carson. Yeah. Especially in his prime. So he's going more crazy, more towards that Morton Downey Donahue, Geraldo Rivera route. Yeah. And he brings on this woman who is supposedly possessed and shit goes south. But, like, they nailed the jokes, the look. It's, I fucking loved it. I was blown away by it. And the ending was this close to scaring me. I wasn't yeah. scared leaving the theater, but I certainly was spooked. Yeah. I saw the last <clears throat> showing in town. I was the only one in the theater. I fucking loved it. I was shocked to see that it was a Shudder movie. Really? Yeah, honestly, if I had known that Shudder made it, I probably wouldn't have seen it. But I'm glad that I did because it's my favorite movie of the year. Freaking love it. That's not saying much. What is it going up against? Madam Web and that movie where a pool eats people. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if it's going to stay number one for the rest of the year. But sure as shit, I absolutely love it. And I can't wait for it to come out so that we can watch it because I also think you'll fucking love it. I, I, I was really interested, and watch his face, the man whose name I cannot say, is really quickly becoming one of my favorite actors, so I really want to see what he is able to do with that. He is amazing in this. There were times where I could absolutely believe that he was a 1970 late night talk show host. Yeah. It has the right look, it has the right feel. And his jokes and his mannerisms, he fucking nailed it. I I just, I, I can't pronounce his name either. He's the foreign guy from Ant-Man. Everywhere. This is the work of gypsies. That guy. Yes. He was also the spot in Suicide Squad. Yes. Okay, I forgot. The Suicide Squad. The, the Suicide Squad. The so, great movie. Absolutely loved it. Can't wait to do it for the podcast. But, um, so that's about it. Other than this fucking movie. Don't, like don't even concept. start with me. Don't even start with me. There's only two minutes left on the clock. I like the concept. The cast is fucking insane. I found a way to make this movie part of the Gilmore Girls extended universe. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's not the best. Not the best. Oh no! But yeah, I, 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 I'm I'm pretty. Yeah, no. But but no. bad Mei yeah, Lin. Okay. Bad. Yes. Bad Mei Lin. I hadn't seen it either. I didn't know if it was going to be good or bad either. You still picked it. <laughs> I did pick it because I find the the concept to be interesting. Maybe interesting for an episode of. Uh, Tales from the Dark Side and not a full length feature film. Yeah. But we'll get to that. Uh, but if that's it for Jeff, aka the 
Betty White Memorial podcast segment brought to you by Red Shadow Legends. Download today. Uh, maybe we should take a break. Should we take a break? We should take a break. Yes, I concur. We will be right back. Nadia Claire. Uh, okay, so, yes. Nadia Claire. No, Nadia Claire down, down here has used my favorite Twitch emoji. Snake with an open mouth. Uh huh. Because they have really weird emotes to use in Twitch chat. But my favorite is that you use it when you are shocked, you use it when you are happy. There you go. There's more snakes. I freaking love it. That is the best emoji to use. That's the official emoji of the Bob Bill podcast. Okay. Snake with open mouth. So when you're doing the snake with open mouth, you really support the podcast. But yes. We are going to take a short break. We're going to show some videos, some silliness. And when we come back, we're going to talk about this week's movie, the 2011 or 2012 or 2013 film, The Brass Teapot. Yes. And I, 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 I found a website. It's a secret website. It's going to be interesting. But oh, no. that's for the second half. Uh, we will be right back with more of the Pope on Film after these messages. Do-do-do! 